paid cash. And I just got through finish watching the Wendy Williams movie. Baby, when I tell you, she said, if it's going to be a story to be told, I'm going to tell my story. Not only am I going to tell my story, I'm going to make me, I'm going to have my own movie with Lifetime. And y'all going to have to just, you know, deal with it. If everybody want to be all in my business, because I'm in everybody's business. So we all going to be in somebody's business today. <laughs> So anyway, I watched the movie. First of all, I just want to say that it was a good movie. Like, it was good. It was straight to the point. We didn't have to wait for nothing. Boom. You know, uh, we see her childhood. And, you know, I was kind of like funny about the character that played her as a kid. Because I'm like, okay. All right. Um, she dealt with a lot of awkwardness because she was bigger than her age, which I can relate because um, my daughter is like very tall and she grew like very fast at a young age, like her height. Like now, even now, she's like way taller than me and people think that, you know, she's my sister or something like that. No, I'm her mom. And then when I say that's my daughter, they always go, whoa, I'm like, yeah. But anyway. So I can understand, you know, her going through that, you know, um, dealing with those issues. I mean, it can be difficult in school, especially with other kids, you know. They like the Joan and all that shit, so I get it, you know. So, but then we fast forward to her um, radio career, and she talked about how she started and um, the different radio stations that she worked at. And finally, when she got a chance, her big break to work, I think she went to, she started off in New York at 97, and then they fired her, and then she went over to a radio station in Philadelphia. And over there in Philadelphia, she met this person, um, they gave him a different name in the movie, um, what was his name? Ricky, Ricky Tony, <laughs> Ricky Tony, but you know, I went on Twitter because I had to find out who it was, and it was somebody named um, Sharik, Shar Shar Sharik, he was signed to Motown, um, he was in a group called Kang Kangley, something like that, and he died in 1999, because I was like, okay, hold up, wait a minute, I need the background because you just got raped, you know, you went to the hotel room thinking that I guess he was supposed to be changing clothes. And I guess he wanted to do more than just change some clothes. So, you know, he took advantage of her. And she said she'll never let that happen again. But what happened again was she was working at another radio station. And she was going with um, Eric B. Um, and basically, just like all these other sorry-ass niggas, uh, they, you know, she, he came in and took advantage of her. He first it started off, let me borrow your car. You know what I'm saying? Let me borrow your car. And most women can't relate to this. I'm just saying. So she ended up um, getting him a car and he messed up her credit and did all this crazy shit. So he was out the window. That was it for him. So then finally, she... Um, Oh, let's not forget about the drug problem. That was right in front of our face, too. Like, boom. You know, she the, the, the coke problem that she had, she gave it to you, told it to you raw, how it was, what she did, you know. So, you know, I was like, well, dang, you know. Oh, and then she also had an abortion um, by Eric B. or whatever. She said she didn't tell nobody. She didn't want nobody to know. So, it's like, dang, Wendy. I mean, she really went. She really went through it. She really did. So, um, that's when she was in Philadelphia. So she wanted to go back to New York. So she talked to one of the producers at the radio station where she used to work at, and she finally got the chance to be back in New York. And then she got her own um, her own show. I want to say. Mm -hmm. And then they show Charlemagne. I was like, oh, okay, that probably be Charlemagne. <laughs> I think 
think sometimes they do that to not make the character look exactly like the person. It might be because of legal reasons or something that they can't do that. I don't know because it's kind of weird to me a little bit. Mm. And it is what makes it even, you know, more weirder is the fact that these people still living. Like, Charlemagne is on the radio right now. So, I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, it, it's whatever. So, um, Wendy, you know, and I just, the rawness of it just really got me, like, I was really surprised. You know, like, for real. Like, she was not playing. She told you, you know, through her career, she was only out of work for two weeks. She's always been employed, you know what I'm saying? And that's, you take pride in that kind of stuff because, you know, people work hard to get where they are and to um, be where they want to be. So she's proud of, you know, her accomplishments and what she did. So um, anyway, so she ends up meeting Kevin, baby. You know, he all, you know, he thugged out just like you like him, but lovable at the same time. Isn't that every woman's dream, you know? So, you know, they meet and she, he smoked his weed and she did her coke. Like, he didn't condone it, you know what I'm saying? But that's just, that's just how that went, you know? And she, he was with her. He was down for her. And they got married. But before they got married... Another tragic thing that she went through, she had like um, three or four miscarriages. One of them was three miscarriages. One of them was earlier in the pregnancy. And then she had two of them where the baby was like at five months. That has got to be horrible. You know, not only to happen to you, man, I mean, I don't know. That's that's horrible. Mm. So, you know, um, but she tried again. She went to the doctor and the doctor told her, oh, you know, your uterus is your, your, your uterus is not strong enough. What you're going to have to do is just be on bed rest the whole time. So she was like, what? That's it? You know, oh, thank God it's not because of all the cocaine that I've been drinking and the alcohol. Oof, I thought my body was toxic it was polluted that i could not produce any children <laughs> no so her last pregnancy which was to her son now oh and then her baby that she the one of the um one of the uh miss uh carriages that she had it was a girl and it actually you know she actually had to give birth you know and ooh, i know that's gotta be painful <sighs> so the last pregnancy that she has, oh my gosh, hold on. Okay, the last pregnancy that she has, um, she has to work from home. They bring the radio station to home, and she has to be bedridden the whole time because that's what the doctors told her. It's just that her uterus can't hold the baby. She can only be up for like five minutes at a time. Her husband was there for her, hand and foot. He got everything that she needed, okay? So... Then time goes by, and um, let me make sure I get this. Make sure I get this right. Time goes by, and her husband is cheating. This is the part where it gets juicy. Um, Kevin starts cheating. I think he cheats one time. She finds out about it, and he like he won't do it no more. And then it was a club in um, South Carolina. And she asked Charlemagne, who is that girl? And I forgot the damn girl name for real. Oh, God. She go by Nikki, but her name's something else. So Wendy saying she knew about it, but she had a son. You know, he need to get through school or whatever. So um, then she hears, she knows about a place in, I don't want to get this wrong now. She hears about this place in Florida where he is. So she asks one of the people that works for them, like, what is Kevin really doing? Oh, snap! He tells the T. He's like, um, he has a house 
in Jersey. And uh, it's right down the street from your house. Ooh, <laughs> baby. The first time Wendy was a detective, Wendy, when yeah, when, when he first cheated the first time, um, he cheated the first time. She went in her car. I mean, we all women. We let me tell you something. We got these antennas. Sometimes we don't use them, but when we do use them, you better be well because we finna come. It's, it's over. It's over. I just need a clue. Give me a clue, and I will fill in the rest of the blanks. That's all I need is a clue. So anyway, uh huh. So she um. That was the first time. So when she found out about the house, child, that is a big ass house. I'm like, what? And the chick got the nerve to be running around here talking about she misses Hunter. How you going to be running around here talking about you misses Hunter when that ain't even your damn house? That's Wendy's house. That's Wendy's money. That's Wendy's everything. Matter of fact, y'all living right down the street. And then... The nerve that her husband gonna sit up here and tell her that she has an issue when all this time you've been cheating on her and she has to be in the public while she around here talking about people. Hell, she going through a whole bunch of shit, a whole bunch of shit herself. So I don't know about that, but that's what he made her believe, you know. So she found out about the house. So what she do? She go inside the house and then she gonna spray paint the house, Mrs. Kevin Hunter for Kev, Kev and Wendy forever. Wendy, you vandalizing your own property. Shit, that's your house. I would have been like, oh, I ain't know we bought this. I would have stayed. What you hiding for? It's yours. But that's just, you know, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. So then here, here come Kevin again saying that it's an investment property of his. But she didn't know about it. Really? Mm. Okay. Investment in my ass. So, um, so then Wendy, that's when, she, you know, supposedly he told her that she needed to go to rehab for her alcohol problem. What? So she goes, she can't have no cell phone. No, that's because he finna have a damn baby do, and he need to go and get his stuff together. He need to do the baby shower, and he want to just actually spend time with his <clears throat> with his new boo, so you know, get Wendy out the way for a few minutes for real. And then she got a hold to a phone. Oh my god, she finds out that the girl is pregnant. Mm. Not only is she pregnant, she's having a baby girl. And when Wendy finally agreed to go to the sober house. Because they also showed that scene that everybody remember, the Halloween costume scene when she uh when she fell out. Everybody thought it was funny. I thought it was funny too, but she was really, really going through a lot and still trying to keep face at the same time. Like basically trying to, you know, like have your feelings just inside and sometimes when you're at work you're supposed to be working you know what i'm saying it's always supposed to be about work and every now and again sometimes work and your personal life they could collide in together and sometimes you can't help it you know what i'm saying but at that day she couldn't help it because she fell straight down to the ground baby and that's when they tried to tell her she needed help and he this fool tried to make it seem like it was her fault no 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 it was your fault so you know what she did she got all her lawyers together and she divorced him. She took him off from being the executive producer and now it's just her show, Wendy Williams, for real. Okay? Okay. So, that's when it kind of ended the movie. The actress that played her, superb. She did really good. Um, the what you know, the person who played Kevin, I think that's the same man who played. Well, first of all, he also plays in P Valley, and he played Suge Knight. So, cause he was kind of giving me like, kind of like Suge Knight tease a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Just, just a little bit. 
But anyway, so you know, the pretty much the Wendy Williams character, she did, like I said, she did good. Um, everybody, you know, I mean, basically, you know what? It was really about Wendy. It really wasn't nobody else to really could cheat, except for Wendy and Kevin. You know, and to speak on his behalf, maybe he got tired of being um, Mr. Wendy Williams. You know what I'm saying? You know how sometimes men, like in the beginning, you know, you want to help somebody out. But then, you know, you figure like, damn, I got a life too. And I want stuff too. And I want some, like, it's so weird. But I'm going to say this. She is a powerful woman. To himself, he's a powerful man. Sometimes men cannot stand when a woman is too um, is more powerful than them. But at the same time, <clears throat> you spending her money. So I wonder how that go. I don't know. I don't know. Unless he built up off of her and now he got his own. So maybe that's what it is. Hmm. But I do know that much. So sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You got to be with that person. You got to be able to take that heat, baby. You got to because you got to know that that person who is supposedly, you know, more than you, you know, they still love you. But sometimes you can forget. Maybe Wendy forgot about her husband. I don't know. You know, maybe he wanted, I don't know what he wanted. But maybe, uh, like I said, probably that, 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 that pride issue that sometimes men have when they can't stand to be, when they have a successful woman. Or maybe he saw the come up. Maybe he saw what could have be. And maybe he probably didn't want to really be with her anyway. I don't know. But you just never know. You don't know what's on people's minds, honey. You don't know what their intentions are, what their plans are, or what, you know, what they're going to do. But it's somewhere in between them lines. I really do believe he loved her. But it got to be something. It got to be. And then she, he, then he turned around and have a baby by her. The nerve. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I really appreciate, you know, Wendy for opening up her, her life. Because to go through those really personal, traumatic things and share that with the world, it takes a lot. And it takes a hell of a woman. And I really do like what she said at the end. You know, she don't regret anything. And another one thing is always have a plan. And that's one of my pet peeves is always have a plan. You know what I'm saying? When you start some, know what you want to do. Figure out what you need to do to go about it. Always, you know, do your research too. You know what I'm saying? Do your research. Find out what you're getting yourself into. Have a plan. It starts off with having a plan. And once you have a plan and a goal, you'll get there. I promise you. So, let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe down at the bottom. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.